Praise the Lord, my daily Bible study friends. This week we've been looking at the doctrine of laying on of hands. Today is no different. We're going to catch up and see where laying on of hands was used in the Old Testament and how it can also be applied today. These people have been like imparting to me. Authority. As Moses was getting up there in age, it was time to pass on the mantle somewhat. So the Lord commanded him in Numbers, the 27th chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is a spirit, and lay thy hand upon him, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight, and thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. When you continue to read that scripture, you'll see Moses doing exactly that which God had commanded him to do. In this way, God had transferred some of the authority that Moses was endowed with to his protege, Joshua. Gosh, I wonder if there's anything like that in the New Testament. Oh, wait, there is. 1 Timothy 4 and 14. Paul said to Timothy, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, and give thyself wholly to them, that your profiting may appear unto all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Do you notice how this involved people, uh, the laity? How he said that your profiting may appear unto all, and that for doing this, you'll save yourself and them that hear thee. He was laying on some of the authority, and the authority was not just given from Paul. In this case, it was given from the presbytery, which are other men of God that are anointed by God, passing on authority to this young preacher, Timothy. Not convinced? How about 2 Timothy 1 and 6? Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands, Second Timothy 1 and 6. So if we're going to really see what the Bible says about this, we have seen then in two different instances where gifts can be transferred from one who possesses gifts to others who may receive them. Now, rather, First Timothy and Second Timothy are talking about the same event. I couldn't tell you. I assume they are different events because 1 Timothy said the hands of the presbytery and 2 Timothy says, uh, which was given thee by the putting on of my hands. Either way, there is a twofold witness that gifts can be administered and given to others by the laying on of hands. There is real essence transferred with the laying on of hands. And we've also discussed in the first lesson, if you remember, that there is a physical transference taking place both ways when we lay hands on one another. This is why we instinctively hug each other when we see each other. And if you are tragically going to a church that does not lay hands on people, they don't lay hands to heal the sick, even though James 5 and 14 instructs us to do so. They do not lay hands on people to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, even though Acts 8 and 17 tells us we should do so. They don't lay hands on the sick that they might receive gifts, even though First and Second Timothy have already showed you that that's New Testament Bible. You know, even in the book of Acts, the sixth chapter, the third verse, ending up at the sixth verse, when they were passing out food to the poor, they laid hands on the men who were responsible for doing that, that they might have wisdom in the operation of that. Anyway, if you are going to a church that is not doing this, you are absolutely in a false Christian church. Mark 16 and 16 
actually has a lot to say about this. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs will follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is one of those signs that you're in the right church. You're being baptized in the name of Jesus. You're being infilled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. You're laying hands on the sick and they are recovering. This is the actions. This is how you can spot the New Testament church. And you don't want to miss the conclusion of laying on of hands, which will be aired in two days, which is probably the most important of all of the lessons of laying on of hands. As always, I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts. And I got to keep and watch you until then, in Jesus' name. <laughs>